Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Breakthrough You podcast. My name is Josh Rosales. I am the host of the Breakthrough You podcast. And on the Breakthrough You podcast, we believe in all about mindset. Our conversations are geared towards mindset. If we can get 90% of our mind to engage, the 10% of our body will follow. And what we like to do is just highlight and talk to incredible people doing incredible things and we have someone that is incredible on with us today. And I'm super excited because like, um, Laura, you're, what you do is not a job. Like some people, it's like a dream to do what you do. And even, I'm, even me thinking about this is kind of like, man, how do you even like get into that um, to do what you do? And then it's like, you don't get there overnight. It's a lot of work, grind, hustle, skill sets, uh, you know, self-development. Uh, it's, just like word of mouth and just the marketing that that you do to to put yourself out there building your brand I mean it takes a lot of work and so that's why I just love talking to incredible people that are doing incredible things impacting their community and of course uh, I am so honored that you would uh, you know engage with me on on, on Instagram and be um, be able to, to to join us this afternoon. And so with that, I just want to thank you, Laura, for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. Definitely. Well, um, you know, I, I believe that success leaves clues uh, and that you know, if someone wants to be successful, all they have to do is look for other successful people and pay attention to their behaviors and what they're doing and, and why we create the wheel, right? It's kind of like ask questions. Uh, you know, for me, I'm, I'm always, if I see somebody that I'm like, man, that person is successful. I want to know what they're doing. Like closed mouths don't get fed in my world. So it's like, my mouth is just always going. And so I'm asking them like, what are you oh, doing? And whoever, yeah, whoever I'm sitting with is like, what are you doing? How can I learn from you? And uh, let me take you to lunch, you know, um, and really add value to them. But today is all about you. I want to know about you. I want to know about like what what you're doing, how you're doing it. Uh, we're going to talk about mindset. We're going to talk about uh, the importance of mentorship because I'm sure mentorship has played an important role in your business and growing your business, how you grow your business, and especially those people around you because I'm sure you know they, they say birds of a feather flock together and it takes that sharpen, iron sharpens iron. And it's like, you know, you've got to be around people that are going to motivate you and inspire you and challenge you and going to put you in check at those times. They're also going to be there to, to fight for you, no matter, you know, it's ride or die, right? And so uh, it's, it's very important to have those people around you. And, you know, you don't get to where you are by just being average. And, you know, you want to be average, be average. But like, I'm not average. And, and you're definitely not average. And so <laughs> it's kind of like, how do we take lessons from individuals that are not average, that are just hustlers and grinders and just building skill set on the day in and day out? You go to sleep tired and wake up hungry, hungry for more, right? <laughs> and so it's just, that's, that's just it. And so to start us off, Laura, I mean, tell us, tell us those that are watching and those that are listening, tell us about Laura. Who is Laura? Well, I grew up in Kingwood, Texas, which is just north of Houston. A lot of people, if they don't know where Kingwood is, they know where the Woodlands is. So I grew up there and I went to college at Texas Tech University in Lubbock. Honestly, best time of my life. Absolutely loved being there. Um, two different degrees. I did broadcast journalism with a French minor and then advertising with a minor in creative writing. I did some internships in television, realized that it wasn't creative enough for me. And so that's when I started taking classes in advertising. Um, so I ended up graduating twice. My parents said, hey, college is the best time of your life. What do you want to do? Like, let's figure this out. So I really have a lot of credit to give to them for really being supportive of me, figuring out what would really be a career that I would be happy doing. So after college, I worked in corporate events in Houston. So I did corporate event planning and I was doing graphic video web design. One thing a lot of people may not know is I'm actually a little bit of a computer geek. So I can do a lot of these really meticulous things, but I learned very quickly just because you can do something that doesn't mean that that should be your career. I'm an extrovert. So after I left that corporate event planning company, I started my own marketing company and I was sitting behind a computer all day long. It wasn't until 
my parents made the move from Houston to Dallas and asked me if I wanted to come with them, that I came up here, I was still doing marketing. And my mom said to me one day, you know, why don't you just get a job at Nordstrom, enjoy a discount, and then figure out what you want to do. And that is when my fashion career started. I've been in Dallas for about 13 years, and I've been in fashion the entire time. Um, so yeah, it's, it's something where I just kind of went with the flow. That's one of the common themes in my life is really trusting the process and not getting frustrated with where you're at right now, but just understanding that, you know, what's meant for you is meant for you. I really have a lot of faith. I never dreamed of being in the situation that I'm in right now with my own business, but I'm absolutely loving every minute of it. Now you said something that's really, um, really profound you said trust the process and i think a lot of entrepreneurs that's the one thing that they have a hard time doing is trusting the process because between starting something and getting to the end goal there's a whole lot of process in between mm -hmm. and a lot of times people throw in the towel before it's before they they reach the the end goal and a lot of times if they would have just stuck with it everything would have opened up and success would have been on the other side of continuing the hard work. And so trusting the process. And so with that, let me ask you, so being an entrepreneur, do you have the entrepreneur genes in your, in your family? <laughs> it's funny that you asked. So my parents are watching this. My dad was Mr. Corporate America, right? So of course, when I started out, I was going more that route and working for another company. And Besides my uncle and a couple cousins that have their own businesses, honestly, both my parents worked um, in the corporate world, but they've always been very supportive of me. I'm very, very creative. So I'm all right brain. I'm, I'm a numbers person when I need to be, but I don't think logically. I've always thought outside the box and always thought very creative. So it wasn't until I worked at Nordstrom for four years, I was 100% commission there. Nobody ever knew that I was commission based, but I think it's so important when you're working in the fashion industry to always be able to be honest with people. So even though your paycheck may be less, that person comes in and they want to buy a dress, but what they need is $100, not $10,000. And you're honest with them. You're now gaining a loyal client. And women are very emotional when they shop. So if you push them to buy something that they really didn't need, they're going to be returning that item. So for me, I learned very quickly, to be honest, I built a very solid client base working in the four walls of Nordstrom. But what ended up happening is that I outgrew that and I needed to be able to go anywhere my client needed me to go. So, so how did you transition? So you were talking about you. So you built your you built your client base in Nordstrom. You were hundred percent commission, mm -hmm. and putting two and two together, you probably were killing it on the on the commission side because of your honesty and building your clients. And you had repeat clients, and you had clients from referrals. And I could just see it just snowballing to the point where you're like, "Hey, I need a space outside of Nordstroms. I've outgrown Nordstroms." And that's the other thing too, is like, you, you got to, you got to know when you outgrow your space and then have that yeah. being able to pivot to something else. So, so what was that process from Nordstrom's to creating your own business, your own brand? Like, because I mean, you create, you are your brand and exactly. like, how, what was that process of transition? Well, I started finding myself more and more like towards the end of working there, I was walking clients down to other stores, other boutiques, because we didn't carry the item that they needed. And again, going back to that honesty, I, if what they needed was at a competitor, like a Neiman Marcus or another boutique, I was always very upfront with them. Well, so mm -hmm. I was going to go into management that wasn't meant to be. So I ended up putting in my two weeks because I realized that I wanted to continue growing. So I put in my two weeks and it was actually very exciting. I got to go on vacation with my family. We have a place in Barbados. So I got to go and go on the beach every single year that we would go, go to Barbados. There was always a big event at Nordstrom right when we got back. So every time I'd be on the beach, I would be thinking about all the goals that the store had for me sales wise, all the client appointments. So I was able to relax to a point. 
Um, so I quit in February and then a few months went by and we went to Wimbledon. My dad had a business trip in Europe and instead of coming back in between being in London, I believe he was going to Belgium after that. My mom and I were like, well, why don't we come with you? So we are out in Avebury, which is kind of like Stonehenge in the English countryside. And Nordstrom, it's um, in the beginning stages right now, they have their anniversary sale every summer. This is their big money-making event. They do more volume during the sale than during the holidays. I had clients that were sending me their list for the sale. So here I am, I'm on roaming charges. I quit in February, it's June and I have clients saying, Hey, here's my list. And I said, well, you know, I love you, Emily and Valerie. I was like, but remember I gave you this girl's information and this person's going to help you with shoes. And they basically said, you know, we don't care. They are not you. What is it going to take for you to help us? So right then and there, I had to kind of figure out how I was going to structure this. What process was I going to put in place? Who was I going to work with at the stores? How was I going to charge them? And I honestly thought I was never going to work in fashion again. I thought I was going to go work for an advertising agency because there's a lot of them in Dallas because I thought I would use one of my degrees and go the corporate route. But there were definitely other plans in mind for me. Do you love what you're doing now versus the corporate route? Is there any regrets? No, not at all. I, I absolutely love what I'm doing right now. I, I, I love it. It would seem like, yeah, it's like the corporate, even though the corporate world gives you structure and stability and you got that paycheck every two weeks, the being an entrepreneur and working for yourself gives you that freedom to say, hey, if I want to, if no one is, I don't have to be tied into an incentive plan that a corporation has for me. Like, Mm -hmm. why am I giving you a cut of what I'm making? I need to be making all of it, right? And uh, the Mm -hmm. the only one that gets a cut of my money is Uncle Sam. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. So that's, that is incredible. Um, So when everyone started just calling you and, and, and you're like, Hey, I need to take off. I need to like put in my two weeks. And that's something that I wrote down is sometimes you got to put in the two weeks to grow. Like sometimes you got to put in your two weeks on your job to really grow, um, to grow your business. Um, during this time that you were in transition and you started your own business, how important was mentorship and is mentorship currently to you? I mean, I'm sure like you, you probably, some people probably gave you some advice and help you along the way. And like, how has mentorship played, how did mentorship number one play into your decision to like transition to working for yourself? And then how has mentorship played a role in where you are at today and where you are going tomorrow? So I remember distinctly when I worked at Nordstrom, there was an independent stylist and I just remember admiring her and how she had this large book of clients and how, I mean, these people relied on her for all aspects of their lives. And I just remember talking with her in great, great detail. And I was actually going to be her point person that she worked with, but she knew that I was going to be moving on and she needed somebody that was going to stay there for their career. So in general, my mentorship goes in the way of, we have a big network of independent stylists. So there are some that have been doing this 30 plus years. We all get along very well. We'll get together for dinner. There's a lot of bloggers that are very high up in their careers that do extremely well. So we support each other with a lot of events, but also the constant education, the reading, there's different technology that I have access to as far as seeing what the fashion forecasts are going to be, what are the trends? So the mentorship takes a lot of different um, aspects here. It's not just people. Um, There's a lot of different ways of continuing to learn what's next and learning from the best and learning from the people that came before me that are truly the experts in this industry. So it seems like with technology, even with fashion, that if you're not on your A game, you could easily get left in the dust, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 
it's crazy. And I like that because you were saying that mentorship really isn't just people, but it's like learning different systems and, and knowing how to stay um, to stay relevant because man, it's it's every every day something changes constantly. So what are some of the lessons that you've learned, Laura, within your, within being uh, an entrepreneur, like lessons that, you know, we say that, you know, we learn from our, our mistakes and what are some of the lessons that you learned early on that maybe like, Hey, I'm not ever going to do that again. Or what are some lessons that you would pass on to another entrepreneur to say, Hey, this is something that, that I've learned that I would, I, I tell everybody, Hey, don't make these mistakes. Well, number one, you can't take anything personally. It's not personal, it's business. And sometimes that's easier said than done. As a woman, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I definitely want all my clients to be happy. So this is something that I've been able to really accomplish over many years of doing this. Um, also, I feel like it's extremely important to see the big picture, see the forest, not the trees. Dream big. You can accomplish anything you set your mind to as long as you have the right mindset. So it's a combination of things. It's surrounding yourself with a great support system because nobody said this was easy, but it's worth it. If this was easy, everybody would be doing it. So I have some very good friends that are also entrepreneurs and they are some of the first people that I will call if I ever have a question, although they may be attorneys, they may be in insurance or other industries. We all have had those times where we're like, okay, how, how do we handle this? Looking at it as an opportunity and not a problem. But ultimately it goes back to having the right mindset and believing that, you know, this is what I'm meant to be doing and I'm going to be taken care of, not freaking out if clients are traveling saying, you know what, this is great. I'm going to go on a vacation and I'm going to take a few days for myself because if I don't take care of myself, I'm not able to pour from an empty cup. I have to make sure because I Ooh, give so much good. to my clients. Yeah, I, I give so much to my clients. So I got to really put myself first, even though a lot of the times it doesn't feel that way. So how, how, do, you, how do you pour into yourself um, to, to make sure that you're taken care of first? Well, my dog, um, I have a little dog named Riley, little Yorkie. He'll be 16 in August. So the joke is that he's getting his driver's license in August. Spending time <laughs> with him, I, I promise you, there's nothing more incredible than the love of a dog or a cat. Um, so spending time with him, I really have to set boundaries because I don't have a true office. So I'm actually in my studio, what's usually behind me our racks and a lot of projects that I'm working on. I kind of cleared it out so it would look pretty for this, but this is my second bedroom at my condo studio. So it's hard to turn things off because I don't have your typical nine to five. I don't have an office at a separate location. Also, a lot of the work is done on my phone. My clients have my cell phone number. I want them to have my cell phone number, but they also know that once that 10 p.m. Central Time rolls around in that focus mode, which I strongly encourage people to use, that says Laura has her notification silenced. It goes from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. That doesn't mean that I'm not awake, and I'll have people as the exception if I have a big project I'm working on, or I have my parents in there, or my closest friends. They can still reach me, but all those other notifications, I'll get back to the next day. I find that to be the most polite way of letting people know Hey, I love you. I'm going to check this when we're back on office time, but also doing my best to take weekends off. It's going to be a little bit harder to do this month. Um, I'm traveling a lot. I help a lot of collegiate and professional athletes and I'm getting a lot of them fitted for custom clothing for the upcoming season. There's a whole process to that. We got to get their measurements. We got to get things ordered so that it'll be here in September. So I am traveling and I do have some athletes that are coming to me in Dallas. So I will be working for instance next weekend, but it's not going to really feel like work. That's the other part of my job. It doesn't feel like work so often. So I have to train myself to turn that off. Otherwise I won't stop. Yeah. Cause it's what you, it's what you do. It's your passion. Yeah. That is awesome. So, you know, talking to a lot of entrepreneurs, 
uh, it's kind of in the same vein is that they will take weekends off. And it's like, I was talking to one entrepreneur. Um, he has over 750,000 investors uh, and he buys commercial property all over the place. And he was saying that Saturdays and Sundays are reserved for his family. And that if there's any work he has to get done, he gets it done Saturday morning and then bam, that is it. Sunday's totally off, totally off the grid. It's set for his family. And so I think as an entrepreneur, you know, it's so important because like you said, we get so easy to get wrapped up, especially if your business in, is there in your, in your house or your condo. And it's like, you're walking around. It's like business is everywhere. Like it's so easy to be like, Oh, I forgot to do this. Or I need to still do that. And it's like, no, I gotta, I gotta pull myself away from that. And that's where another part of this comes to is like, you know, the importance of being, um, not running yourself in the ground, you know, how do you keep yourself in balance, being physically fit, spiritually fit, emotionally fit, financially fit, and all the other fits, right? It's like, um, how, do you, how do you balance all that? So for me, I mean, this is definitely multidimensional. I am doing a lot of things. So I'll do Pilates. I have a standing appointment with a Pilates instructor and a trainer. So I have them booked. If I don't show up, I'm charged. So that's incentive right there. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, I can't wait to go work out. Honestly, if I could hire somebody to go work out for me and I get the benefits, that would be amazing. <laughs> But that, that hasn't happened yet. So here we are, alas. But so, Maybe Elon Musk will invent something. <laughs> right? I'm sure if anybody could do it, he would. So between exercise, um, I'm very open and honest. I've always talked about my mental health. I have a therapist that I talk to about every week. So no matter how busy I am, finding those 45 minutes to talk through, like, maybe um, work, it could be family, it could be health, it could be anything like that. Also listening to my body, I always tell my friends and my clients, if you are starting to run yourself into your, the ground, and if you don't find time to take a break, your body's going to force you to. So let's make sure that we're listening to our body. Um, I, I'm always trying to find time for going to dinner with friends. I am obviously a fashion stylist by trade, but that's not everything about me. I also love to be around my friends and my family. Um, so going out to dinner, that's one of my favorite things. I love food. A lot of my friends call me the fashionista foodie. Um, and also my parents live here in Dallas. It's very easy for me. I can just shut the door here and go up to their house. It's about eight minutes from here. I don't necessarily have to do work there. My office is not there. So that's a great hiatus from work. Um, and it doesn't feel like I'm in the city at all when I'm up there, but yeah, there's, there's so many different levels of this, but it's constantly reminding yourself, okay, it's five, six, seven o'clock. I started at this time. If you keep working, you're going to resent what you're doing because you're exhausted. So exactly. So question, do you ever grunge it? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I mean, I think like sometimes you just have to be like, you know what? It, it just, I don't want to, I don't want to dress up. I just want to grunge. I just want to grunge oh. it. I remember, uh, yeah, tell, I don't know, go for it. I mean, like, so I'm dressed up right now, but usually I'm in yoga pants and a t-shirt. Nothing about my job is glamorous except for maybe 3%. I'm running around sweating right now. It's, I, don't, I think, 105 here in Dallas. So I'm carrying things. I'm going to boutiques, the mall. A lot of Man. people that I have brought under my wings over the last two years, they are under the impression that this is a very glamorous industry. Well, yes, fashion is a beautiful thing and it's, it's amazing, but there's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of breaking down boxes. There's a lot of long hours. There's a lot of walking and you know, you're, you're constantly helping people. So it can be draining energetically, but more than anything, it's definitely not glamorous, but it's being able to do all those things behind the scenes that other people may not want to do. I'm okay with that. I'm never too good to do anything. And that's really why I believe I'm where I'm at today. And that's another, that's another trend talking to entrepreneurs is that when you see some some really successful entrepreneurs, 
humility plays a big role in that because a lot of them are like, you know what? So one guy I was talking to, he was like, you know, what? I, I've worked at Walmart. I've gotten fired from Walmart. Like, and I just continually just consistently just discipline myself to go for my goal and continue to do whatever. And all the, the roadblocks that, that would come to him, he just, uh, a challenge is meant to be overcome. And so mm -hmm. overcome the challenge and just keep going and staying focused. And, you know, it's just like, I, I don't have a problem. Whatever I need to do, I'm not above doing whatever I need to do to, to succeed. And because it's a why, right? Our why, why do we do what we do? Is it our families, our children? Is it like, what's the motivation to like, not have that safety net to like cut the safety net and say, you know what? It's sink or swim, do or die, put up or shut up. I got to make this happen and I got to figure out a way. And so, um, that's where you have that mindset of like, it has to be successful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I, I worked in so, a restaurant in high school. Um, I, I feel like everybody should have to work in a restaurant and in retail and know what it's like to be on that other end and have to be polite. Even when people are not the most kind to you being in that service industry. So I've done both of those and for me, anything that I've signed up to do, I give it my all and I embrace the experience and want to get as much from it as I possibly can. So whenever I'll bring so on I somebody, could just... go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, kick them heels off, roll up them sleeves and say, let's get to work. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And so whenever I'll bring in an intern or somebody that is helping me with a project, I remind them that there's nothing that I would ask them to do that I don't do myself. And exactly. that's, that's really, the biggest thing is these days is finding people that really want to work. I feel like we have, it's, oh, we're in an man. interesting time right now. People don't want to work the way they used to, for sure. Um, so that, that's very interesting to me. Um, so at the moment, you know, it's just, just me, but since I work directly with every brand, every luxury brand, um, they're an extension of my company and the larger retailers like the Neiman's and the Nordstrom, I work directly with them as well. So they're incredible support for me. Um, but I always want to be surrounded with the right people. I think that's extremely important in all aspects of your life, not just in work. What's your maybe number one podcast that you listen to? Well, I, I really have a favorite book. Okay, that's my, perfect. My favorite book is by Cute Blackson. It's K-U-T-E Blackson. It's called You Are the One. It is life-changing. I've referred a lot of my friends to read it. I will tell you a few years ago, I was definitely not the person I am now. I had a lot of mental health issues. I had a lot of physical pain. I have a lot of neck procedures that I've had on my neck, um, stemming from a fall as a baby. So for me, I was at a point in my life where um, I was living in bed and was, I still had my business, but I was not a functioning, thriving adult like I am now. And I just remember that this book was the kind of nudge that I needed that really helped me believe in myself and all the doubts, all the anxiety, anything that could have helped me back. It was just like, wow, okay, this is what I needed to hear. It was so moving. Um, so that book, You Are the One is incredible. That is and awesome. Then, so he has a second book. It's called The Magic of Surrender that just came out. But I always tell people to start with you are the one and it's a very, it's a light read um, and it's extremely empowering. So the second book that Cute has written is called The Magic of Surrender and I'm still reading that one. But okay. I, I, I think I'm more old school. I haven't gotten too into listening to all these podcasts and all these audiobooks. I still like to actually like hold the book. I like to be able to travel and have that book with me. So um, I've never been somebody that would like read it on like a, an iPad or whatever. I like to actually like hold the book. So, Definitely. but yeah, for me, that, that book was and is very life-changing and I've since become very close friends with the author um he's incredible so that is awesome so um what is and this is a an off this is a total pivot on on something with instagram so what has been your number one 
or number two, num number one, or like one or two um, things that you're doing to grow your Instagram following? Well, number one, I think it's just being authentic. So there's, it's nothing against bloggers, but everything that you see, nobody's paying me to say, please buy this. These are things that I love that I would buy with my own money that I do buy with my own money. Yes, I may get a discount or I may have a connection with the brand, but always being authentic and always being real. So when I was talking earlier about just some mental health struggles and how I've been very open about that, I will talk about that. I don't feel like we need to have that stigma around that. I think we all have times in our lives where we're going to struggle and it's, it's great to break that stigma. So the realness factor would be more than anything. And also just having fun. Like, I think humor is incredible. No matter what is going on in your life, everybody loves to laugh. So I like to keep it lighthearted too. That is awesome. Well, I am so thankful that we had an opportunity con to connect on the podcast and you have a powerful story of where where you've come and where you've brought your business to and just the uh, the mindset you're definitely um, breaking through the mindset and really establishing yourself as um, that brand and what you're doing like I said it's just incredible of what, what you're doing a lot of people's like man that would be a dream job but you're living a lot of people's dream and so that is just incredible and so any uh, parting thoughts, any um, advice for other entrepreneurs that are maybe struggling uh, to get their business and thinking about, um, they're thinking about throwing in the towel, what would you tell them? Well, don't give up. If it's something that you really, really want, it will work out. But again, it's not going to be easy. There's going to be struggles along the way. But the biggest thing is have a plan, have a business plan. Surround yourself with people that are successful. So think about the, you are the company that you keep. You want to be around positive, positive people. It's very good to have mentors. It's great to have a support system, especially if your family is behind you and supports you in your dreams. But again, it's seeing the forest, not the tree, seeing the big picture, not letting something stressful derail you maybe there's a situation that you could choose to be really stressed out about it acknowledge it see it for what it is address it and then move on because otherwise we can let little things ruin our day but I I think I could close on this story like this morning I volunteered at Attitudes and Attire this is my first time being able to volunteer there since COVID so I volunteer there before COVID about once a month. So I help women that have hit their rock bottom. So maybe they were addicted to drugs, maybe they lost their job, maybe they were in an abusive relationship. So these women are now getting the physical help that they need health-wise, emotional help. They're getting basic job skills, life skills, and I'm styling them for job interviews. So these women are there. They have a boutique set up. It's called Attitudes and Entire, where I volunteer. It's at the Trade Center. The clothing is donated or samples from other brands. These women have nothing. And I'm mm. here helping them, building them up, building up their confidence so that they can go out there into the world and start fresh. And it is the most empowering thing that I'm able to do. And it really puts things into perspective because these women are able to find the beauty and these items that are gently used and donated, they're able to feel so much confidence from the interactions that we have with them. And so here we are, maybe complaining about traffic or we've had a bad day with you know something very minute that's happening when these other people have had something life-changing and now yeah. they're getting on the straight and narrow and really making great decisions in their life. So that always puts things into perspective for me. And it's the most empowering thing that I can do with my time. Man. Wow. Wow. Um, you're just doing it all. And <laughs> I, I, I take my hat, take my hat off. I mean, you're definitely, man, you, you have inspired me 
and those that are watching and listening, um, inspiring them um, to to just not stop and to um, to give. I heard a saying that says, when you start giving, you actually end up learning how much more you're able to give. And it's just true as like, give, you'll find out that you can give a lot more. And exactly. it's, uh, that's just been incredible. Well, Laura, I want to thank you so much for, for coming on um, the Breakthrough You podcast this afternoon. And I want to thank you for inspiring us and challenging us and imparting to us advice and knowledge for other entrepreneurs that are watching. Maybe they're not an entrepreneur. Maybe it's just someone that's watching to say, you know what? It, it's someone that has not allowed situations to keep them down, but use them as stepping stones to get to where you want to be. And it's all about mindset. So thank you so much. I appreciate our time together. And um, man, this was, this was incredible. Very, very much so.